Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us in this new thrilling FTV Lunch and Learn series in which we guide you on an expedition through life at Wood. We'll be showcasing a new profession every month and providing you with a comprehensive glimpse into their daily routine from sunrise to sunset, their contributions and the distinctive duties and obligations they bear. This type of content is what you've all been asking for, and we hope to inspire you to take a role in energy. And today, without further ado, I'm really looking forward uh, to introducing you to Shirley Ike. She is the Global Director for Digital Consulting at Wood, focusing on data management in particular. In her role, she leads a team that supports all aspects of data-related initiatives for clients by combining state-of-the-art technologies with practical data-driven solutions, standards, and procedures. Shirley's team aims to efficiently manage and leverage data as the essential foundation for transforming complex and dynamic information into actionable intelligence. By doing so, she empowers her clients to achieve their digital transformation goals, which is such a buzzword right now. I feel like everything is around digital transformation. So thank you so much, Shirley, for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much, Flip in the Barrel, for having me and Jamie for discussing how my role plays into the energy space. Yeah, well, Shirley, I I know that you have a master's degree in chemical engineering. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm very curious, for starters, how did you end up in a role in digital transformation? And tell us a little bit about your educational background and how you got to where you are today. Uh, okay, uh, well, actually, I grew up in the UK. I'm actually Nigerian originally, but I grew up in the UK. I graduated from Imperial College London uh, with a master's in chemical engineering. And following this, I began working as a floor assurance consultant with, within Wood. I had I decided to pursue this role uh, because my boss at the time came to my university to present about the company Multiface Solutions Inc., which is what it was known at the time. And it was literally the first uh, light bulb moment I had that connected my degree to real life problem solving. Uh, after the presentation as a, as a giant nerd, I went down to the front to speak to him on a one-to-one -one basis and quizzed him about the company, uh, which was called MSI, that was later acquired by Wood. Um, I, found that, I found that the classes I was taking directly actually related to the necessary foundation for this job, uh, such as multi-phase modules, thermodynamics, controls, et cetera. And these directly related to the work we did in flow assurance which is you know, trying to assure flow in the complicated systems, uh, which have different phases flowing, et cetera. But I don't want to go into too much detail there. Um, it is worth noting, though, that before I actually went into energy, I interned in an investment bank, which has since gone bankrupt. So I totally made the right decision in pursuing the career path and followed really where I am meant to be. I really believe that the, you know, the presentation from my boss, my later boss, is what steered me back into energy. It ignited a passion in me that, to use what I studied as I could, because mm -hmm. uh, as I could see the direct impacts, and 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 I could make that I can make in the real life world, you know, with all the with all the learnings I had acquired at university. Okay, mm. I love that. I love that you came into energy, um, and not only that, but you're part of something really big right now, and. For those who might not know, can you tell us what digital transformation means to you and what it means to Wood? Well, <laughs> it, it basically, a lot of our clients are kind of um, wanting to step into the 21st century. They're recognizing that how they utilize their data is very, very important. Um, so what we're doing is stepping into that space. So we're saying to them, we are we have we have the domain expertise and we recognize there's a lot of technology out there, but we can be the bridge between for you guys. We can support you guys knowing the background on how, on how you work in energy and then leveraging technology to support you guys in 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 transforming how you function, how you work, how you smarten up and how you use your data, et cetera. So that's really what digital transformation means. It's literally coming in and trying to develop a platform where you have a single source of truth, i.e. you are fully aware of everything that's going on in your asset. And then if you, if you do know, if you have that information, you can use a lot, you can do you can predictive analytics, monitoring your asset better, making sure people aren't doing, uh, working in silos, uh, making sure that whenever you have different vendors coming in, there's a single source of truth, et cetera. So that, is, that really is what digital transformation is. And that's what it means to me. 
Mm. Yeah. It sounds like your role is very impactful. So for somebody who might be interested in this digital transformation space, what type of positions did you take um, before you actually uh, got the role as the global director for this division? Um, can you walk us through a little bit of what your back history was for those that you know might want to aspire to be in a role like this? Yeah, well, I moved to Houston uh, probably in 2012, actually. So uh, I had started in the UK with my company. I was able to establish myself within our America's team as a lead consultant. Uh, initially, you know, you know, when, when I, I met my boss in Imperial College and then I joined the company, et cetera, what I would, et cetera. So eventually I moved to the US. I took on a lead role and I was then eventually promoted to business manager for Wood Energy and Floor Insurance Company, focusing in the Americas. I mean, I love my group in Florida uh, We bring together a lot of other disciplines within engineering. Uh, we get to see the big picture and then distill it into things like inputs to this pipeline design, operational mitigation strategies, top size design, et cetera. However, a real key differentiator for the success of our group is technology. Ability to streamline analysis and reporting, you know, required smart tools. Mm. Uh, a subset of our group deployed software products that had engineering models of the client's asset linked to the actual facility. And this is what we call a process twin. So I'm trying to link it all together. So process twin is a model of your asset that can that can be continuously tuned using your asset data to ensure representation of the real thing. And you can imagine if I have a model of my asset that I can then use to uh, do a lot of what-if analysis. I can also use that to gain more information that I cannot measure. Um, mm -hmm. You can also do, there's a lot of benefits to that. So my exposure to the benefits of technology and optimal data utilization is really what fueled uh, further my interest in digital transformation and my subsequent role now, uh, oh, my, my, my next role, which was a digital transformation and, 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 and innovation manager for Wood Americas. Mm -hmm. uh, so the aim for this group was to support our clients in digital transformation, uh, whether it's streamlining their data and processes, uh, bringing it together and ensuring it makes sense, and then utilizing this data to support everything from design to operation. Mm. And this could be in form of 3D visualization, process optimization, predictive analytics, uh, physics-based modeling, utilizing AI as well. Uh, so in part of the work we did here is that we actually use physics-based model to train AI ML models. So mm. the idea is that you those models, those process train models you build, you can use that to run multiple simulations that mimics everything that could happen within your asset. You use that to train an AI and then you tell it the best, so it, it, you teach it the best steps to take so it learns. So therefore when it sees it in real life, it can then give you the best decision when you implement that in your process. That is so incredibly neat, especially when you talk about AI. AI is like all the rage now. Um, <laughs> and the younger generation is just like immersed in it. I mean, you see AI everywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you I mean, like often... I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Shirley. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like that's kind of so. Initially, I had that role, but now I have a role as a global director within Digital Consulting Group, which is now focusing on data management. And and data management is the backbone uh, for a successful digital transformation. You must be able to structure your data and your processes; otherwise, it would be difficult to streamline the way you work. Uh, you know, the goal. So the data data is the start of any anything that you're doing, basically, right? So if you have the information, so even if you're going to train AI need information to train that AI on, right? So mm -hmm. how you structure and how you structure your data and your processes is the foundation for that. So that's kind of what I take care of now in my new role. Okay. You mentioned a few things like um, engineering, physics, um, modeling. What type of background does somebody need as far as degree that you think to, to take on a role like this? You being a chemical engineer and especially a master's, you know, do you think that Though others could come in from a marketing role, a communications role, or do you do you think that a really an engineering type position might might be required for such a um, such a position within a digital space? Uh, I mean, I, it's a tough question. I mean, I think my advice would be: well, definitely have a solid foundation or uh, of any kind of an education foundation. I'm not sure exactly. I think engineering is ideal, um, uh, but I'm sure people who are willing to learn. 
uh, can pick things up. Um, so definitely a solid educational foundation, but the most important advice I would give is, is to ensure that you're pursuing your actual interest uh, because you need to have the drive to continuously seek out new information and stay up to date with the ever evolving technology and, and innovation space. Mm -hmm. And in terms of skills, I mean, I, I would say, I mean, in addition to that, you also need to make sure you can communicate well and also have problem solving skills. Uh, you have to be able to ensure that you can convey information clearly and concisely, but and but that you that you're also able to work to resolve challenges creatively and constructively. We're always very interested what people's uh, actual days look like, <laughs> and also incorporate some of your personal things that you like to. Yeah, uh, well, my role, my current role as a director in digital consultant, uh, means I'm responsible for operational delivery and P and L uh, globally for my team. So I'm responsible for all day-to-day -day management and operations decision, ensuring high standards of service delivery and quality. Mm -hmm. uh, so my actual goal and vision for my group is to be you know, the trusted partner of choice for our clients, to support them in their digital transformation journey. So data management, again, like I said, is the backbone for any successful digital transformation. I will just keep saying that. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it is a very, very important step. Um, so, just in, so just then moving on to actually what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, all the all the activities I do from morning till evening often involves a lot of one to one uh, with my team, as well as integrated meetings to support my global team. Mm -hmm. uh, also meeting with upper management, business development teams, and other business unit leaders uh, that are taking care of other aspects of wood digital consulting, also greater wood, uh, because we often work collabor collaboratively <laughs> in service of our clients to ensure robust product or service delivery. Uh, my day often starts as early as six, sometimes earlier. <laughs> mm -hmm. I try to avoid the earlier ones uh, to support multiple time zones. Um, I can go sometimes as late as 9.30, but I try not to ever have my day that starts at six and ends at 9.30. So I usually stagger it. So mm -hmm. it happens at the same time. So ideally, the first part of my day is attending an F45 workout class. <laughs> this is really the best way, I think, to kickstart my day as I feel more energized and activated all day. Um, I try to fit in I fit the same in between 6 and 8 a.m. for the most part. I also try to ensure I make time during my morning for the UK teams, sometimes Australia, when they stay up a little bit later in the evening. <laughs> I focus mostly in America's team or, you know, after 11 towards the late afternoon. And then sometimes I have calls in Australia in the evenings. Uh, Melbourne does have a nice overlap around 4 o'clock our time, CST, in Houston. Uh, but Perth is normally a little bit later for us to connect in the evening my time so mm -hmm. that's generally what my day looks like I can only imagine being in such a global role all the people that you touch and you know there's a a lot of people are very interested in energy because the opportunity to travel and see other parts of the world in a role like yours do you feel like that is true and you do get a chance to not only meet these people I'm assuming also virtually but go to different sites and, and have opportunities to see and and explore other parts of the world well, my role is global, uh, but I have only I've only been in this particular role for about three months. Uh, but some travel is definitely required for things like key client meetings, mm -hmm. uh, leadership strategy meetings, etc. I'm actually heading to the UK soon, luckily, and I get to see family too. Uh, and I get you know for, for clients as well as to attend a conference over there, and also to really spend time uh, with my team. Um, the idea is, of course, to make sure that you, you have your folks enrolled into the vision of the group. And also to learn from them, uh, have a bit of show and tell sessions so mm. that I understand exactly what they do. And they also understand what my vision for the group is. Mm. So, and, and in terms of schedule, I mean, the, how much I travel will be dependent on the need, really, whether client management, et cetera, or team. So it's mm. three months so far, and I this is really the first trip I'm taking. So. Well, that's exciting. And at least you get to go back home, too. So I think that's that's a nice added bonus. When you talked about going and seeing your teams, um, is there any projects that you can kind of walk us through that we might be working on? Just like maybe a notable one that you might be doing or just an example of what it would be like in your role? We're supporting multiple clients uh, globally currently, including a couple of notable ones actually in Gulf of Mexico, uh, where we've been involved in supporting them in building their digital transformation strategy. Um, and this includes helping them articulate the problem that they're trying to solve, uh, identify the end goal uh, with clear KPIs, and, and, then, and then finally, this will feed into an implementation-ready roadmap. 
um, which would then, and then the next stage would be kind of coming up with a detailed strategy to actually achieve and maintain these goals. So a lot of our clients will come and go, oh, we want to do exorbitant things like global optimization, you know, uh, they want to do remote operations. You know? There's a lot of like big goals out there. Uh, so what we do is try to distill it into like bite-sized chunks and steps mm-hmm. uh, to actually achieve it. So we, we we take a look at what they're doing, find, identify where the gaps are, and then try to help them in building up a plan of action. Um, so you know, other goals that clients might have might be like, oh, I want to reduce offshore employees. And a way to a way, a way to achieve that could be utilizing your data intelligently to then do predictive and prescriptive maintenance. So if you know when you will need maintenance, then you plan better instead of just going out going out there for no reason. Um, you can also then start to track your actual data versus documentation if you're able to implement the life cycle information management, i.e. actually being able to have a single source of truth where you are tracking all the information in one platform. Mm-hmm. A lot of our clients also want to say, oh, they, they want to monitor their asset health and gain information is power. The data, being able to leverage that that single source of truth is also an ability to know exactly what's going on in your asset at any time. Some clients also want to reduce their carbon footprint. Um, and this is also something that we support them with. Uh, we, ha- we do analysis for that, but we also have uh, tools that can actually track their emissions and compare it to uh, their 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 limits and then give them and then flag when they're going above and whatnot. So yeah, so generally there's a lot of stuff that we do for clients, just depending on what what they're looking for. It Um, sounds like every day is a different day, which for some people can be really exciting. So tell us a little bit about what kind of quality someone might have in your role and like what the expectations might be. I mean, I know you mentioned before some um, when you and I spoke, like micromanaging, micromanaging might not be the best way to go about this role. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some aspects that would be a positive way and, and some of the things that you could look for in a position like yours? Uh, <laughs> oh, so in terms of like what skill sets? Yes. Deal. Um, yeah, definitely micromanaging is <laughs> is is a bad one. Um, so I think that, I mean, it's a very, very good question. So, and I'm just trying to make sure I frame my thoughts accurately. Uh, I think micromanaging is bad because if you're working with a group of, a, a team of people, it's, it's very, very important to give them autonomy and ownership. Mm-hmm. Um, more heads are always better than one. Uh, it is important to challenge and motivate the team to come up great. And then conversely, uh, other traits that are very, very beneficial is being able to communicate. It is very, 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 very necessary to ensure you can communicate what your what your goals and your vision and strategy are are, and, and then that they're clear and concise. Because a lot of our a lot of our employees just want to be kept in the loop and understand the direction of the company. Um, and this is something that is really, really, really important to me because I am someone that needs to have the the, the clear big picture uh, for me to jump on board. So, and I want to also make sure I give the same thing to my teams as well. Mm. I think the clarity and the transparency is so important. And I, and that also ties back to the culture of the company um, and, you know, how Wood's culture and what it's like. Can you talk to us about what you enjoy about Wood and um, how you, how it's uh, been comparison to any other experiences you may have with other companies, like you notably mentioned, possibly going into investment banking, which you ended up not doing. Um, <laughs> so as far as the culture dynamics. Uh, I mean, like, I definitely, one thing I really, really, really enjoy uh, about working for Wood is the people. Um, I find that I'm surrounded by exceptional people, you know, who really take pride in their work and want to deliver at the very high standards. Uh, I definitely think that that is differentiated between Wood and maybe some other companies. Uh, I also really enjoy that communication and transparency, uh, which I truly value, <laughs> again, because I am someone that likes to have that full picture and vision and, and really understand and buy into that for me to jump on board and really drive these initiatives forward. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think absolutely the people and the transparency and communication is, is key and something that I really enjoy working. Mm. You know, and I think that also goes back to your leadership style. And so in your role today, you do manage a group of people and it is global. Um, what strategies or approaches have you found to be successful in managing a team 
Um, and how have you adapted your management style depending on maybe what region or what scope of project you're working on? Uh, I mean, I have a, a team of maybe 150 to 200 people globally. Uh, I mean, if, and I, but my actual direct, direct reports is five people. I have a lot of one-on-ones with them. Um, a lot of the times I just want to sit and make sure that I understand what their inputs are as well, and then they also understand mine. Um, we oh, Again, transparency and communication is something I try to focus on with my team. Um and get their buy-in. I don't know. I don't like to dictate or say this is what needs to be done. I think that collaboration is key. You know, getting our heads together is key. Being able to challenge one another is key. Um, it's really, really important that, especially for our clients, if we can't challenge each other, we do not put our best foot forward for our clients. And that's definitely an environment that I I thrive in, and I hope that whoever I'm working with is comfortable with as well. Mm, that's what what a great outlook though and I love the challenging aspect that you add to it because I think that's really important especially in these big projects that you're working on uh so knowing that your role is global knowing that you're just about to do some of your first travel does wood allow flexibility in in any position in in wood not just essentially yours but is there flexible schedules that are um you know acceptable do you get opportunities to work from home can you give us a little bit of details around that uh well, yeah, actually, so the pandemic definitely yielded a lot of this, to be fair. So Wood actually does have a hybrid schedule. Um, so it's really wonderful you change the work in life. I personally like it. Uh, it removes a lot of the commute time. Um, so that hybrid schedule means that you can go into the office sometimes and work from home other times. Um, and for me personally, uh, it's easier for me to work out in the mornings and then mm-hmm. jump on that call rather than then going to get ready and then driving into the office, right? Rather, you see what I mean? And, and also for me, I find that for more focused work, uh, working from home is better. But then for more teamwork and collaboration, uh, being in the office is much better. Um, you know, the only caveat there is that it does mean that you're more accessible at all hours, uh, which can be beneficial, uh, especially having a global team, uh, as long as you maintain a work-life balance. Mm-hmm. I, you hit all of the right points there. Um, and I, I feel that in my role as well. Uh, and I do think the flexibility is so important because just that commute time alone, you save an hour, an hour and a half. There's so much you can do with that. I love to hear that your role in, in Wood is um, is pushing on that flexibility and, and giving that opportunity to their employees. Absolutely. To close, I'd really like to ask you, you know, doing digital transformation, working with AI and all this data, and also how can we apply new things to our customers? Now, how do you see your role evolving in the future? Um, you know, the progression of AI is, is, is uh, I would say, like hyperspeed right now. Um, so we'd love to get your outlook. Uh <laughs> I mean, I definitely see an expansion of what we're doing in digital consulting in a global scale, um, expanding to more core markets, uh, maybe more, you know, more locations. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of our clients are recognizing that the need to leverage their data and they see a need to move away from document management and data man- to data management rather. They want to structure both their data as well as their processes and, op- and optimize their ways of working. I think what is really well placed, you know, with that domain expertise, uh, merged with technology, uh, you know, and that technology, you know, we take an agnostic stance in that, in that space. So to support our clients in this transition, you know, with countless benefits that I imagine we haven't even thought about all of it just yet. Mm-hmm. So as long as you're able to lay that foundation, right, of being able to structure your data, your your information processes, there's a lot you can build upon that, whether it's, it's you know, additional intelligence, being able to optimize how you work, you know, you, using that data to train AI ML models, using that data, access to that data allows you full visualization of your system and how you operate. But there's just countless benefits that can come out of that. And I really think that there's, there's, a, there's an expansion, there's a boom that's coming in the industry. Uh, not just energy, but just all the industries. I I really like that you ended with that boom in the industry because I do feel like in energy specifically, there's such a big opportunity for a, for all this digital transformation to take place. 
um, and to really expand on that. So I, I'm very happy to have you come on and explain to the audience and to those that are listening, you know, what your role is and how it applies to energy specifically. Um, I feel that it's very important in the energy space to have this, um, to have a digital aspect to your business um, and let alone to be consulting all of the operators and customers that you have um, on that digital transformation. So thank you, Shirley, so much for spending time with us today and um, walking us through your your daily routine as and as well as your role. So I really appreciate it. And it was just a really great glimpse into what you do. Thank you so much, Jamie, uh, Flipping the Barrel podcast. Appreciate you for having me. I yeah. uh, enjoyed myself. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. <laughs> um, if you liked this episode, please continue to follow. We post once a month and you will find them on the wood site and the flipping the barrel site with the lunch and learns from wood so thank you so much for joining